알아 얼마나 나를 감격하게 하는지 Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> the choir song is really beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Mm. All right. Um, are you ready? Ready to listen or sleep? <laughs> All right. If you're ready, let's go to the Lord uh, with our prayer. Our merciful Heavenly Father God, we give thank to you. Thank you for your grace and health to open our Bible seminar. By your, by your wonderful grace, we came here to listen to your voice this afternoon. May your love and grace upon us and guide all of us with your mercy. We're going to open your Holy Scripture to look into it. You may open our heart and give us more understanding to understand your holy will and way. Everything is on your hand. We only rely on you. This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, uh, let's open the same page like yesterday. John chapter 5, verse 39. <clears throat> I have to open this scripture over and over because uh, this is our goal and this is our target. So if you miss it, um, mm, you, you couldn't get uh, eternal life. So let me read here. You search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. So this uh, passage was spoken by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, search the scripture. The searching is not just simply reading, right? Searching, uh, you have to open the scripture and then with your willing heart, and then you have to read it to get something. That's the searching, the scriptures. Uh, the scriptures, not uh, humans preaching, not uh, humans talking, not uh, chatting between the people, right? Many people, they have enjoyed a uh, ch uh, chat uh, together about God and about holiness, about the Christianity. The chatting is not a truth, right? The Bible clearly declared, you have to search the scriptures. Many people, they try to collect some information from the scripture only. That's why they slipped away to get this crucial, uh, really significantly important message in the Bible. The Bible is very, uh, very uh, clear to deliver, uh, to deliver the truth to us. You search the scripture for in them, them, the 66 books. You think that you may think. You think. You may have, not may have. You have, right? You have eternal life. This is our goal. So... Um, Welcome here to listen to uh, the voice of God, but at least you, 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 you're willing to come here. That's why you're here now. Um, sometimes we could see some people, some person who's shouting and yelling on the street, Jesus for heaven, right? Unbelief for hell, right? That is really uh, embarrassed. Yet yeah, that message is clear and solid. That is real truth. If you believe in Jesus, no matter what, you can go to heaven. 
But if you stay outside of Jesus Christ, you, will, you deserve to go to hellfire. Yeah, that's the truth. But if we deliver this holy gospel that manner and that way, you know, that, that is really uh, uncomfortable, right? The message is the truth. But the way of delivering is really, really um, disgusting, right? The gospel is good, and Jesus is good. And Jesus was God himself, and then he's all going to tell the truth only, right? Um, apart from the Bible, uh, we, 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 can, we cannot go to the Lord exactly. Bible is the guide, and guide us to get the absolute truth. And someone said, believe in Jesus, and they're shouting and yelling. And then he was alone, and then he kept on shouting, believe in Jesus. But all of a sudden, one man passed by, and then he made a question to him. Why? He was focused, shouting, believe in Jesus, but never questioned why. That's why he was uh, first uh, marveled, and then uh, he was embarrassed. How can I say the right answer? And then he, all of a sudden, uh, he said that, Believe in Jesus, and please get rich. Hmm? But this man said, I'm rich already. Why should I believe in Jesus again? Right? That's not the correct answer. You know, uh, some people, they are uh, miscarrying the conception of the being born again and the salvation. Some people say that if I believe in Jesus, God, he's going to make me rich, or he's going to make me healthy, right? And he's going to... Uh, open wide uh, what I planned, the way what I planned. Yes, Jesus can do this, and then God, he may allow you to go that way, but uh, that, that is not kind of a solid promise in the Bible. You know, the truth is, even though you believe in Jesus, you may sick in bed, right? Even you already got saved, hmm, um, you, you could be, you may confine in the hospital for a long period and you would die at the hospital. If, even, even though you believe in Jesus and then your, your faith is so solid, but you may get bad grade at school, right? But one thing clearly God, Jesus, uh, he promised with us. What is that? If you believe in Jesus, you can go to heaven, right? That was the promise of God. So today also, we're going to go uh, with this goal, obtaining the eternal life, right? <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. Let me read here. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the things does not happen or come to pass, that the things which the Lord has not spoken, the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, you shall not be afraid of him. Yes, probably we may have this kind of mindset in my heart. Okay, the Bible is good. I know that the message is good, but how could we know? Hmm? How could we know that this Bible was given by God himself, and how can we entrust everything about all the written words in the Bible? The Bible said, hmm? if the things does not happen or come to pass, that is the things which the Lord has not spoken, right? Even there is a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, you have to search the scriptures. The message is not match with the scriptures. Don't be, don't be afraid of that and don't try, try to believe in it. Believe that. That's why the studying the Bible is important. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 21 and 22. Present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reason. Strong reason, says the king of Jacob. Let them bring forth and they show us what will happen. Let them show the former things. What they were, uh, former things what they were, that uh, we may consider them and know the later, uh, later end of them. Or declare to us the things to come, show the things that are to come hereafter. That we may know that you are God's, yes, do good or do evil, 
that we may be, we may, uh, be dismayed and deceived together. The, this scripture explains us the real God, the true God, the creator, can do all these things. And also he, he is uh, he's capable of prophesied and fulfill all these things. That's why the Bible, uh, one third of the Bible is prophecies. And in our human history, uh, God, he, had, uh, he has performed, uh, fulfilled all the prophecies here, Bible. Things does not happen or come to pass. You can see that. If you look into the Bible, you can, you can, you can get lots of evidences and proof of God is here. Uh, yesterday, we uh, studied about the, the Bible, right? Uh, the first book of Moses, five books of Moses, was written 35,000 years ago. And then that book containing uh, what happened uh, before, especially the, what, what, what happened and the, what was the story in the beginning of the human history. The latest uh, book is uh, Book of Revelation, which was written in Ops uh, John. 8,100, from now on, 1,600 years ago, uh, 1,900 years ago, right? 1,900 years ago. That book also uh, telling about what will happen in our future. So if you look into the Bible and the search the scriptures, you could understand the Bible is absolute truth. Literally, we can believe it, which means God is alive. Bible, people used to say Bible is truth, right? Why? Why we can say the Bible is truth? Because I agree with that. Agreement is not a fact, right? Agreement is condition. But Bible is full of facts. That's why we can say that Bible is truth, okay? uh, archaeologically and historically and scientifically. That's why Bible is full of facts. That's why... Uh, this is undeniable truth. Actually, archaeology came from the biblical archaeology. Mm, here, uh, the famous archaeologist, Nelson Gluck, this is American. Um, he already passed away, but he discovered 25,000 places in the Middle East based upon the Bible. Uh, he, he achieved major excavation. For example, Ezion Gebel and Mayan of Solomon. That was a really huge work. But he said that there was not any discovery which was not matched with the Bible. How could he achieve all these uh, things? 25,000 places? Because the Bible always telling the truth. Because of that, he was confident what he is doing and digging, digging down the ground. And another man, uh, William Ramsey, he, 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 he was uh, British. This, this man, he always follow and, and excavate ancient city. Usually the city names uh, constantly change the names. But he followed ancient cities uh, based upon the book of Acts. He trusted that the Bible is always telling the truth. That's why um, his major work around 300 cities he was able to uh, discover it. According to the book of Acts, the Bible telling the truth. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created ha the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. We just, uh, yesterday, we already uh, covered this one. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him, male and female, he created them. From the beginning, God, he created a human, the male and female, right? And then uh, the Bible said, Acts chapter 17, verse 26, and he has made from one blood every nation of man to dwell on all the faces of the earth. And he determined their uh, pre-appointed time and the boundaries of their dwellings. God created a human from one blood, one blood. That's why only human, between human, you can share the blood, right? The, we have um, 
kind of what is that? The blood type, right? If we match the blood type, and then we can share the blood. One blood, one type, right? Um, abs, it looks like a human being, but we cannot transfer the blood to each other, right? Only human blood. That's why the Bible telling the truth. Human create, made, made from one blood. So uh, let's find out our ancestor. Now, science offers a chance to find a genetic atom. A single ancestor whose DNA survives in every man on Earth today. From the Inuit of the Arctic to the Amerindians of the Amazon. From the nomads of the desert to the businessmen of Wall Street. Spencer Wells, a geneticist with National Geographic, will lead us on a journey to identify the scientific atom and reveal what made him so exceptional that he could father all men on Earth. But how do you unravel a chain so many generations long? A chain that leads all the way to the roots of humanity's family tree. Most of our DNA is a jumble from all our ancestors. It's what makes each of us unique. But there's a section of our genetic code that stays almost constant. The Y chromosome, the special piece of DNA that only men have. It's passed virtually unchanged from father to son, like a family name. The Y chromosome links the men of today with the men who lived in the past. That the Y chromosome can trace the origins of men from all over the world. From Africa to America, all the branches on the tree join up in one trunk. The Y chromosome links men today back to their common ancestors. We followed the DNA trail all the way to the bottom of the tree. Every branch leads to one man, one Y chromosome. There must have been one man who gave rise to all men alive today. He is the ultimate super ancestor. He is scientific Adam. Hmm. Yeah, mentioned about scientific Adam, but Bible said there was Adam, right? Uh, this kind of uh, genetic uh, system uh, followed the first man of human being. He was Adam, right? The Bible said, the human created from one blood. And also, uh, we can follow uh, human uh, race from the beginning. Actually, the Bible says um, there is a birthplace which is called the Garden of Eden of all human beings. Here, after creating, uh, after, uh, creating uh, human being, and God let them live at one place, which is called Garden of Eden. You already heard about this one. What if, uh, if you uh, graduate and studied at a uh, Christian school, uh, probably uh, you, you may uh, you might, uh, learn. This is the kind of illustration to instruct us, but this is really happened, the Bible says. Here. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and he put them, uh, put the man whom he had formed. That's why the, the, at first, God, uh, the Adam, he was created as a king, and then he ruled over and, and, and governed everything what God created. But uh, unfortunately, the Bible uh, says something happened at that place back then. We biblically define that as total depravity. The Eden, uh, but uh, there was uh, one condition, don't touch the forbidden fruits, in order uh, to show uh, the respect and admiring of God, but Satan uh, encouraged them to take it. That's why Adam and Eve, they fall the test. That's why they lost the rights to stay there, and then they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. 
that happened. That, that's why that happened because of, because of that happening, the Bible written in this way, and then be, become this volume. It's really huge. Here, <clears throat> that was disobedience. That's why they lost the paradise. Um, we have to check this one. Where the Garden of Eden is really located? And how can you know that was true? And also, what is the evidence? We are going to check one by one. Fortunately, uh, the Bible uh, declared the exact address of the location of Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to 14. Here, let me read. Now a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Python. The Pison or Python. Here. And second, uh, this Python, uh, it is the one which uh, skirts the whole land of Havilah. Let's Let's take a note, Havila. And second river is Gihon or Gihon. And third river is Hittigel. And fourth river is Euphrates. Actually, the Hittigel, um, uh, in English, uh, the Tigris. Actually, Tigris and Euphrates is running on the surface of the skin of the earth, right? But two rivers are missing, the Gihon and uh, Python. Here, four rivers Python, Gihon, Kaihon, uh, Euphrates, and Hitegel, the Tigris. Location of Garden of Eden is now, we can see that uh, this place was the ancient location of Garden of Eden. How could we know? First of all, we can see two. Rivers is running currently here, Tigris and Euphrates. Two rivers are running. But if you go there, so every place is covered with sand, a desert place, desolated. And there's no mountains, no green place. It's really desolated. That's why, how could you believe this is the ancient location of the Garden of Eden? But now, there's no doubt this is the Garden of Eden. Uh, now we are able to take a picture what is there under the sand. That's why when we take a picture in this area, two rivers are still running currently, but two rivers fossilized under the sand. We are able to find that. Two rivers here, Gihon and Pison. Two rivers is real, running. And this is an ancient map, ancient map. Look at here, Kush and Havila. This is an uh, old, uh, old man said that the Saudi Arabian area, that was the Havila area. That's why the fossilized river is running uh, to Havila. We, we, we can say that the Python. So this is the uh, terrain uh, under the sand that was, you can see that this is a valley, big valley, valley, here. Mm. Now, well, we, we, uh, we say that uh, perhaps there is a Garden of Eden buried somewhere under the Persian Gulf. There's lots of evidences we have here. Uh, this is a Python. Why? This is a Havila territory area. And this is a Gihon. Two fossilized of big river is under the sand. This is a real picture. What is there under the sands? Right? That we can see four rivers. So, uh, actually, this is a Persian Gulf nowadays. Right? Mm. All of a sudden, the Bible said, the book of Ezekiel, um, the time of the Garden of Eden, all of a sudden, Garden of Eden was able to um, bury it under the ground, bury it under the ground here. 
And near uh, this area, uh, there is a Sumerian Empire before. The Sumerian, uh, this is the famous Sumerian Adam and Eve cylinder seal. This is kind of a seal. But there is a story of the, what happened in Garden of Eden. This is forbidden trees. This is Eve in Adam. And there is a serpent here. Right? Mm. The Bible always telling the truth. So let's see uh, what food is here. The Middle East. For centuries, archaeologists, theologians, and scholars have debated the location and even the existence of the ultimate of all lost worlds, the biblical Garden of Eden. It was here, according to the Hebrew book of Genesis, that a paradise once existed, a paradise where the first human beings, Adam and Eve, were actually created by God. But could such a paradise now shrouded in myth and legend, have actually been a real place. When we're looking at the Garden of Eden, we know that actually there is a physical description as to where it was. So it is said that four very specific rivers came from it or were near it. So we can actually go in search of this. Two of these rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, are well known and actually run through what is Iraq today. The other two rivers that are described are not very clear. Researchers now believe the third river, known as the Karun River, runs through Iran and joins the Euphrates just north of the Persian Gulf. Then, in 2010, satellite imagery revealed a fossil river, or dry riverbed, called the Wadi Batan, that once flowed through northern Arabia and also joined with the Euphrates. Could these two rivers have been the location of the Pishon and Gion rivers, the lost rivers mentioned in the Bible that point to the actual location of the Garden of Eden? When you read the account in Genesis, it says that the four rivers formed one river. So very careful reading indicates that the two rivers which are today in Iraq the Tigris and Euphrates, and the one river which is in Iran, the Karun, and the Fossil River in Arabia, when you join them up and form one river, it's at the approximate location of northern Persian Gulf. And according to the Bible, that one river flowed through the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Uh, if we go and research and excavate so many places, but we can see that uh, there is these drawings, the cave wall, you know, cave wall. And we can see so many livestock there, right? Livestock is grass or sand? Which one? Grass, right? Ancient, ancient time, this, that area is really, really fertile. And also we can see this boat, which means at least there was a river for it. And huge and gigantic tree, really huge, really huge. And fossils also explain that the ancient time, there was a really gigantic world. This is uh, uh, Meganeo. Uh, this is uh, uh, ancient, uh, ancient of the dragonflies. Uh, ancestor of dragonflies. The fossil said, you know, moss is ancient time. The moss is 60 to 90 centimeters. This is... Um, Nowadays, we, we, we can see this kind of thing is rice field, right? Uh, and cockroach, cockroach is 30 centimeter. You know, the Korean uh, cockroach is really small, right? The Philippine cockroach, have you seen that? Really big, and fly. <laughs> right, fly. A butterfly is 65 centimeter, or a shrimp, two meters higher than me, two meters. In order to put the uh, sinigang hippon, <laughs> we need a really big jar, right? And cow is nine meter, cow, nine meter. From there, really huge. Mouse, rat, you know, 2.4 meter. Can you imagine that? Rat is bigger than me. 
you know, what if you uh, encounter this rats in the dark alley at the night? What would happen? You have to run, right? But unfortunately, the rat is faster than you. But don't worry too much. In ancient time, the human also very giant, right? The footprint, 370 to uh, 560 millimeters, is really big. Do you know what it is? This is an uh, ancestor of lobster. No, lobster. How tall? Eight feet. Yes, taller than you. If you, while you're swimming, if you see that, <laughs> Devastated. This is rhino, hornless rhino. It's really huge, right? This is, um, you know, dinosaur's bones fossil. Really huge and gigantic. This is a human finger, only this part, only this part. Three inches, three inches, really huge. Uh, this is indexing finger. This fossil helps us to measure the size of a human face. How? Try, put your index finger in your nose. Usually, your nose hole size is this finger size. That's why with this finger, we can, you, can, you can imagine the size of human face. Really, really huge. This bone, your know, thumbs. Hmm? This is the footprint of human being. Really giant, right? What if this kind of size of feet is kick your knees. The Adam, uh, we, can, we can presume, uh, at least his, his tall is 15 feet. Very tall and giant, right? And after Noah, Noah's flood, human become small. Now, six feet around. This is a female part, your legs the human legs, right? Uh, if we put in design, uh, drawing the human height, really giant, very tall, right? And uh, this is the human uh, skeleton. Uh, mm, we found this, we, we dug out this one, uh, Italian coal mine, really giant. How could it happen? In ancient times, the water layers was wrapping the earth. But, and then, uh, because of that happened, uh, because of that creation, um, the, uh, the Earth was protected from the humble layer, uh, from the spaces, from the sun, like this. Hmm? this uh, that's why uh, this is a research report of the explanation of the greenhouse effect. That's the entire world. There is no uh, one, one climate, one climate. That's why there is no high pressure and no low pressure. There's no, no wind blowing. Why? One climate. But time of Noah, God, in order to punish, uh, judge, uh, punish the sinners, God used this water layer. Now we able have only a uh, clouds layer there only. And when we search the lifespan uh, of a human being in, in the Bible, after Noah, uh, his, his life was ended uh, 950. But since then, rapidly human lifespan has decreased. Why? Because of missing a water layer. Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 18. All of a sudden, uh, we can see that the trees of Eden to the depths of the earth. All the glorious things and then all, all, all the glorious and huge, um, you know, flora and fauna, uh, the animals and trees, uh, the buried under the ground. And then um, it, it become a crude oil because of the pressure and heat like this. All these glorious things buried under the ground or set in and then pressured and heated. That's why we can find the last of petroleum field there. This is a Tigris, this is Euphrates, right? Around there, last of petroleum fields we have. Seventy-five percent of all products is produced in this place. Why? 
This is evidence. There was Gordon Maiden. The Bible always carrying the truth. Genesis chapter 14, verse 10 said, One day, one Jew, uh, while he read the Bible, he was able to catch this verse. Genesis chapter 14, verse 10. Now the valley of Sidon was full of aspart pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled. Some fell there, and the rema uh, remainder fled to the mountains. Full of aspart. You know, aspart is a star. This is the last production when you're refining the petroleum. Hmm? He thought that if there is a loss of export, which means around there, there is a petroleum field. That's why he tried to find this place, Valley of Sitting. And then finally, he found out this place. And then he got lots of petroleum, this man. You know, David Rockefeller, right? He established Standard Oil Company. He is worldwide the richest person. This one, David Lockfeller. How could he find out? Because Bible always carrying the fact. Bible is full of facts. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Then the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the th thought of his heart was only evil continually. After casting out from the Garden of Eden, Garden of Eden became empty. That's why God, he buried under the ground. And Adam and Eve, they, uh, they came out from the Garden of Eden, and then they uh, have lots of children. But uh, separated from the grace of God, human became corrupted. And first, the murder case happened in his, uh, his family, right? The Cain killed the Abel, right? After that, the human race going to worse and worse. And then uh, probably uh, Adam and Eve, he, they tried to do their best to return to God, but he, they couldn't. That's why people, they corrupted, and then they lost the godliness. That's why then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. People became worse and worse. That's why God, he stopped the human race. Let me read continuously. The Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the for the earth is full, uh, filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That was God's first plan. Uh, God, he destroyed all the human race again and then reinitiate hmm, the human history again. But he couldn't do that. You know why? When he tried to uh, destroy the entire human being, but there is one righteous person. His name was Noah and his family. They are the righteous. If God destroyed this righteous people with the wicked, God cannot be called as the justice, right? His name, his holy name is contaminated. That's why he made a plan to save Noah's people, Noah's family. That's why God gave uh, the message to him. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and cut it, uh, cut it with pitch inside and outside. God uh, ordered him and they gave the design of the ark. And then Noah, he built ark. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, it uh, is width 50 cubit and its height 30 cubit. You shall make a window for the ark, and then you shall finish it to the cubit uh, from above, and set the door of the ark in its side, and shall make it with lower second and third decks. Uh, this is a brief design of the ark, like that. The length is 135 meter. And width is to almost 23 meters. And height is almost 40 meters, three-story building. 
This figure, remember this one, okay? Keep this image in your brain. And on top of that, there is a window and there is a roof. There is no propelling equipment there. There is no sailing, sails, something. It, it, this arc is purpose of just floating only, right? The someone, some, some, uh, someone uh, made this replica based upon description in the book of Genesis. This is a really huge size, right? And Bible says, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 5 said, while he was building the ark, he preached the word of God to the people. For the first time, there is no scriptures, right? That's why. What he heard from God, and then he delivered to the people. This is the message of God. Look at this picture here. This is Noah. Look at this man. They are laughing at him. Laughing at him. See, this crazy old man, I, I already told you, hmm? He always telling the telling the um, uh, the humorous story. Hmm? God, He's going to destroy us with water. There's no raining. There's no water here. How could God destroy us with water? Hmm? And these people, they are listening very well, right? Someone sit beside him. But truth is, truth was, no one get inside of the ark except Noah's family. Even animals, they obey. And then they got into the ark, but people, they, they didn't. That's why. Genesis chapter 7, verse 11 to 12. In the 600 years of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, on the day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the window of heaven were opened. And the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. That happened. Word of judgment like this. Forty day and forty nights. If you are staying in the middle of the water, you will lose your, all your temper, right? Temperature, and then uh, you die. Genesis chapter eight verse four said, "Then the ark rested in the seventh month and seventh day of the month on, on the mountains of Ararat." Mountains of Ararat. Actually, this explanation is really uh, awkward. We don't use uh, the mountains of Ararat, right? Usually, we you used to say the mountain of Ararat, right? But in English version, the Bible says mountains of Ararat, which means this Ararat mountain has a multiple peak, right? If we search at the mountain, uh, mountains of Ararat, we can find this place. Uh, here in the Turkey, eastern side of the Turkey, here we can see the mountain Ararat, double peak, mountains of Ararat, correct, right? This is a really, uh, Bible has great accuracy. Here, yeah, this is a real place. If you go there, you can find the ark. Have you been there? No? Let's go together. Ararat. 구약 성경의 가장 유명한 순 중에 하나다. 
창세기에 의하면 노아의 방주가 멈춘 곳이 이 아라라시다. 이곳의 사람들은 아직도 자신들의 조상이 노아라고 믿는다. 마을의 한 소년이 말을 끌고 아라라스로 올라가고 있었다. 소년이 오른 것은 아라라스를 탐사하는 학자들의 베이스 캠프였다. 아라라스는 고고학자, 신학자, 지질학자들의 큰 관심거리다. 是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，是，
worldwide flood. You know, local flood, uh, from time to time we have it. Um, this is evidence of great, uh, you know, uh, deluge, 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 the great flood. Uh, the surface skin of the planet Earth is covered, 75% of the skin of the Earth was, uh, is covered with evidence of a great deluge. Uh, this is a uh, mm, you know sedimentary layer, sedimentary layer, here, sedimentary layer. Mm, it was forming, uh, it was forming a structure called being uh, uh, called um, you know bedding, 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 right? Lay up, lay up, bedding. Uh, it happened by water, water flood, and then it, it could happen under the water. This is evidence. Seventy-five percent of the skin of the Earth is covered with this uh, sedimentary layer, which means this is worldwide flood. Look at here. You can see the water, right? You can see the water. Evidence. Water layer. And beside that, all of the continent and all of the world, they have the story of the a big uh, deluge and flood. Hmm? Babylon and Greece and India and North and South America and the Pacific, especially the Hawaiian uh, story is really accurate. Here, let me read here. Hawaii, uh, long after the death of someone, the first man, the world became a wicked, terrible place to live. There was one good man left. His name was Nu'u. This is really the same, uh, the similar syllable, right? Pronouns. He made a great can a canoe with a house on it and filled it with animals. The waters came up over all the earth and killed all the people. Only Nu and his family were saved. This is really had a great similarity with the story of the Noah's Ark, right? And um, that time, uh, the the time, the, there is no high mountains. That's why with this water, entire planet, this water could cover entire planet. And God, uh, he removed these waters. Hmm? Psalm chapter 33 verse 7 said, He gathers the water of the sea together as a heap. He lay up the deep in sea, uh, storehouses. From the chamber of the thoughts come to the... Uh, Will wind and called from the scattering wind of the north. By the breath of God, ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Doesn't ring a bell? You know, God, He uh, removed all the waters. And the, uh, He dug down the bottom of the ocean. Because of that, high mountains raise up. And also, all the waters, the sea water, He got, He froze that, North and South Pole. Right? Huge icebergs we have here. He gathers the water of the sea in the jar. Look at here. This is amazing, right? All the water is covered with this earth is here. Uh, all the ice, uh, this ice melt down. Uh, you know, sea level increased 55 meters and over. And also he dug the bottom of the ocean. He put the deep into storehouses. Psalm chapter 33, verse 7. Uh, in order to remove the water, God, uh, he made a storehouse by, at, the, at the ocean. The deep is, deep is uh, really deep, 11, over 11, 11 kilometers. The deepest spot is near the Guam and Philippines over there. And all over the world, we have evidences there was a flood. You know, this fossil is really uh, hard to be here um, while eating something, right? Which means this is kind of, <laughs> some accident happened. And then all of a sudden, become fossil. What if the, f the fish died and then decomposed, right? And nothing. The, all the fossils happen. Something great digested happened. That's the evidence. Flood. 
fled. Beside that, all of the world, we are able to see salt lake, you know, salt, salty lake, salt water uh, cut in some places, and also some caves filled with uh, salt water. Uh, here, if you go to uh, Bolivia, uh, you, can, you can see that Uyuni here. Have you, have you been there? No, really, I really want to go there, but, mm, but let's see that. This is a, a salt, salt, top of the mountain here. We're crazy lucky and feel super grateful to be in such an amazingly beautiful place. And now we're setting up for lunch. Time for a picnic! I don't think this picnic spot could be beat anywhere else in the entire world. So when all of this was under the ocean, these were coral reefs, and these are natural coral formations. All of them were preserved by the volcano activity that throwing the ashes and with the effect of the water, petrified the coral. They covered the coral and took the same shape as it, and they preserved all of this, including the whole island. <laughs> Seawater cut in this area, and then with the sunlight, it became, what is that, a salt field. Hmm? And uh, the Bible says, Psalm chapter 104, uh, verse 8, they uh, flowed over the mountains, they went down into the valleys, to the place you assigned for them. After uh, Noah's flood judgment, there was, a, uh, there was high mountains and deepest spot in the, in the ocean. Why God, he judged these people? Because the sin, right? They corrupted. That's why God, he restored the human race with the family of, uh, of Noah. But after that, continuously they, uh, uh, they uh, committed sin before God. Here. The lesson from the history, uh, history here if men obey God, uh, we get the blessing. Why? God is the or, or origin of the blessing. But if men disobey God, there is judgment. That's why in Noah's time, uh, they were judged by the water, the water judgment, right? The Bible said, unfortunately, it says, the fire judgment in our generation. Mm, fire judgment. In order to explain this, in ancient time, God, he demonstrated one fire judgment before. Have you ever heard about the uh, judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah? Mm. Now, we excavate that place. Genesis chapter 19, verse 24 to 26. Let me read here. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities all the plain, all the inhabitants of cities, and what grow on the ground. But uh, his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. This is a well-known story, right? Uh, here, now, um, we are excavating uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Because of low, uh, low, uh, when, when down of the sea level of the Dead Sea, uh, we, we, are, we are able to see uh, some, some, some ash ray layer there, ash, ash layer. Here, so now uh, we excavate this place, and then we are able to find out the ancient city there. Here, ancient city. Hmm? This is an altar. Hmm? This is a temple. 
the city ashes. And brimstone also embedded some, some, some many places there. And then we can, we can see that this is a very high quality and very high purity. And also, this, uh, we can imagine that it was a really big city. Uh, usually in ancient time, at the gate of the city, uh, there is a cemetery, you know, graveyard. And then uh, if they uh, dig, excavate this place, there is, was huge uh, public cemetery was there. 50,000 here. Uh, you can see Bab et Dera, uh, this is an uh, ancient name of, uh, nowadays the name is uh, Bab et Dera, this is ancient name is Sodom and Gomorrah here. This looks familiar, right? The entrance of the city. Ashraya, Look at here. This is gateway. Gateway of town, somewhere else. The embedded in the ash in the uh, rem uh, remnants of the brimstone. Yes, we can see that. Hmm? The, the surfer is very in unique. And what is that? Charcoal. Charcoal, right? In the middle of the ash layer, we can see charcoal, which means well, something, something was burned, totally burned, right? God recorded that. That, that city is totally incinerated by the, by the fire. Right? Mm. Still walking on it. Mm. And then so many researches was done. Mm? Especially this one is very interested. Usually, if we get the fire, the firemen, they investigate so many things, right? And then where is the starting point of the fire, right? Well, when they uh, research this place, look at here. The fire started in the roof and spread to the interior when the roof collapsed. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says, brimstone come down from the sky, right? That's why even research uh, in this place, they found out the fire starts from where? Roof, which means the Bible is correct, right? Bible is truth. And author uh, points to the burn layer and Numeira. Ash layer and the charcoal layer. Hmm? This is a really big city. This is human uh, bone fragments uh, combined with uh, surfer together. Hmm? Now we uh, excavate this place. The Sodom and Gomorrah also. True. The Bible is true. The Bible has the evidences. The Bible true means God is alive. God is alive, right? Uh, this man, uh, Randall Yonker, is professor of archaeology in Injury University. He was the one who excavated this place. Hmm? And then he, he uh, let's uh, see his interview here. The Sahel area of the five Uyjokji Jung are found in the area. 이 유적지들은 갑작스럽게 종말을 맞이했죠. 표면에 재가 한층 덮여 있어 불에 타서 멸망했다는 것을 알수 있습니다. 또한 가지 흥미로운 건 예, 이들 유적지가 세워져 있는 것을 따라 다섯 개의 개울이 있다는 것입니다. 요르단 상부로부터 흘러내려 사해 계곡으로 들어가죠. 그리고 이들 개울의 북쪽 끝, 밥 에테라와 누메이라 유적지와 이어진 곳에 몇 개의 공동묘지가 있습니다. 이 공동묘지에 5만 명의 시체가 묻힌 것을 발견했는데 그 당시 이 지역에 상당한 인구가 있었다는 것을 보여주고 있습니다. Everything that's mentioned in the Bible and the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in terms of natural resources and geology and terrain is still here. Hasn't changed very much critical element. 그는 성경 속의 초자연적 자원 중 하나로 등장하는 유황은 지금도 이곳의 천연 자원이라고 설명합니다. What do you think that is? No, no, some sort of chalk. That's almost pure sulfur. Sulfur. Pure sulfur, very high uh, quality. Tastes like sulfur. And it's throughout the walls here. It's throughout, not just throughout the walls, it's throughout this whole area. The whole area is full of this stuff. Hey, let's get a couple more of these babies. 
Okay. And I'll show you what uh, what happens to it. Is <sighs> Well. Yeah. 유황 덩어리들로 무엇을 보여주려는 건지는 알수 없지만 점점 어두워지고 있으니 서둘러야겠죠. Pick it up. Let me show you. You know what happens to sulfur when you light it? Well, it lights. Catches fire. Oh. Okay. Okay, that smells. Wait a minute. Yeah, better put it down. That's burning sulfur, otherwise known as brimstone. I, in my whole life, I didn't know what brimstone was. Well, brimstone just means burning stone in uh, sort of medieval English. It's another part of the Bible which is remarkably found in the landscape here. Based on human reality. Huh. Then does that lend credibility to the idea of Sodom and Gomorrah actually happening? Well, it certainly makes it credible to the people in this region because they would remember something about a destruction of a city that may have happened possibly through a natural phenomenon mm -hmm. or possibly through the intervention of God. So when they talk about fire and brimstone, this is what they're talking about. Would you like that coming down on you? Good to see you. Are okay. done with your visit here? 고식물학자 데이빗 맥크리리가 큰 구덩이 옆에서 기다리고 있었습니다. 그는 누메라의 최후의 순간을 볼수 있는 여러 층으로 된 흙을 보여주었죠. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to know exactly what's going on. What's very clear is that we've got uh, two burn layers, mm -hmm. uh, a burn layer up here, and you can see chunks of charcoal. Yeah. Those are probably from the wooden beams that would have supported uh, the roofs. This layer is between 20 and 30 centimeters thick. Okay. And then below that you have a much hotter, what I'm interpreting is a hotter burn layer. Whiter is hotter. Whiter is hotter, yeah, that's this ash. So this is not a small fire that got out of control. This is a huge fire that burned everything. It huge fire, right? It burned everything. The, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is in the Bible. This is also true. Bible always telling the truth, right? And the human cannot manipulate God. And they manipulate the words of God also. So if you consider this is true, what does that mean? God is alive. He is not joking. He, 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 he is not joking to us. Hmm? Here, Matthew chapter 24, verse 38 to 39. Let me read here. For as in the day, days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in a marriage until the day of Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of Son of Man be. The Bible says, this is the accusation of God. Why those people were destroyed? Because of what? Eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in a marriage? You know, eating is the sin? What about drinking? I'm drinking now. Drinking water. You know, eating and drinking, marrying, and giving in a marriage, this is our usual life, right? Huh? Why this kind of usual life deserves punishment? You know, uh, you have to know this. In all their life, there is no God. Even you are carrying normal life and ethical life, right? If you don't know about God, if you don't worship Him, if you don't recognize Him, that's the sin. That's the sin. That's why God's telling us about that. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 and 6 said, And did not spare the ancient time, the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of a people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities, cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. That was simple, right? Uh, God, He is going to show us what is the punishment in the hellfire. Actually, hellfire, the punishment, the judgment is really severe than this one. 
Second Peter chapter three, verse six and seven, by which the world that then exists perished, being flooded with water, but the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. In our generation, this world also well preserved and fully ready to get the fire judgment. The wrath of God is upon us. The matter of time. This is really a matter of time. You know, fire judgment. This is a nuclear explosion. Have you imagined what will happen? Look at here. Fire judgment. The second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, and some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God, He has a purpose for this. So repentance is still waiting. After the, um, the word of judgment, and also we just to find out that the story of Sodom and Gomorrah was real happened before. That's, that's true. And also the Bible telling us about another instance here, the Babel Tower. Actually, uh, Babel Tower, when they scattered again, and then they found out a very good place to stay and dwell. The, the place was called as a Sinar. Sinar or Sinar. And then they, they wanted to settle down instead of scattered all over the world. They built their own city. And then they, um, in, the, in, the, in the middle of the, that city, they built a tower to go against uh, the God. Genesis chapter 11, verse 9 says, Therefore, um, therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from, the, from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Um, they stuck together, and then they cooperate very well. And then they work together, and then they, they uh, build their tower in the middle of that city here. Uh, this one, uh, this one is a famous picture, uh, a fam a famous drawing of the Babel Tower. Um, the Peter Brehel, uh, he he drew uh, this well-known painting of Babel Tower. The Genesis chapter eleven, verse one and two. Let me read here. Now the whole earth has one language and one speech. And it come to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Sinar. And they dwelt there. Dwelt there. And they have to move forward continuously, but they, they found out one good place to stay. Come, let us go down, and then and they are confused the language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth. And then and they um, seized the building, the city. Therefore, its name called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Yeah, that instant happened. You know, uh, only human, uh, we have different language, right? The language is communication, communication. 
Communication is connecting. The language is spiritual things. You know, um, Korean dog need to learn English when he transferred to the United States? No, they use the same language, right? What about birds? Birds travel long distance, right? Um, they don't need to take a visa, and they don't need to take a passport, a stamp, right? But just flying. And then no worry to say mm, different language, right? But only human is different language. They work together. Previously, we have one language. No problem making connection to each other. And then God confused the language. They walk together, hey, bring the water. We need more brick here, right? And then they walk together. But all of a sudden, 아무도 이해를 할수 없는 거예요. 무슨 얘기를 하는지. 막. <웃음> 네? 서로 얘기를 하고 뭐 협조를 해야 되는데 막 말이 하나도 안 들리는 거예요. 막 들리다 보니까, 어, 정말 들리는 말이 있는 거예요, 이렇게. 네? All these things happen. Really confused. We cannot communicate each other. That's why they, they had to stop to work together, right? Uh, that, that happened here. The linguistic science, scientist said, actually, uh, there is one language, but human language is uh, evolved and it's been changed so many ways. Hmm? Humanity has gradually changed as it spread to the world. Yeah, this is a linguistic map. The root is one. Root, our language is different. And also, uh, this is an aerial view of Babylon. The square in the foreground is all that remains of kind of, you know, Jigrat. Hmm? Jigrat, this is a kind of tower. Uh, and better known as the Tower of Babel. The ruin so visible today uh, of a lie the remains of uh, Hammurabi city. This is the Babylon area. Hmm. And also, nowadays, uh, we excavate the hometown of Abraham, Ur. Hmm? Here, ancient city of Ur. The Babel Tower, the story is really happening. And they scattered again. They, they, they were scattered again. And then, um, until Genesis chapter 11, God, he recorded and write down all um, the world history. But if, if he keep on uh, write down that story in the Bible that way, Bible going to be very huge, very thick, very big volume, right? That's why Gen from Genesis chapter 12, God, he picked one person and initiated one nation. And then... All, all the world uh, history and nations connected with this uh, nation. The nation we know well, the Israel. Uh, that's why um, here, uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Let me read here. Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. To a land that I will show you, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be, be a blessing. God promised three things, uh, land of Kenya, and nation of Israel, and blessing through Jesus. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, a land, a great nation, a blessing was given as a covenant. Um, that's why Abram was called from his hometown, the Ur. And then God guided him and then put him in the land of Kenyan. Yes. We know this is the land of the soul of Israel, Israel nowadays. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac fathered uh, Jacob. Jacob fathered 12 sons. But 11 sons, Joseph was very special. Um, that's why, uh, jealous of other brothers, uh, Jacob, uh, the Joseph was sold uh, as a slave to the other country, as a slave. Here. Sorry. Mm. Jacob... Um, 
And Joseph, uh, he became um, he became a slave of Egyptian Empire. But uh, he had a story there, and then finally he became a prime minister of Egyptian Empire. Uh, Egyptian Empire, and back then, that was a really great nation. Mm. Since then, the land of Kenyan uh, suffered because of famine. The family, in order to get the food, they traveled to the Egypt, and then uh, they were able to meet the brother Joseph. Joseph, he, he forgave all the mistake of his brother, and then uh, invite them to the Egypt. And the Egypt was really highly developed and civilized the empire. That's why all the family settled down in Egypt. And then uh, uh, they stayed, uh, stayed there, and then they didn't go back to the land of Kenyan. And then since then, uh, four, four generations had passed. And Israelites settled down in the land of Egypt, but Joseph passed away, and the friends of Joseph passed away, and then other politicians and king, kings also passed away. A new uh, empire, new dynasty established, and then the new kings watching over the land of Egypt. Many Jewish people are there. That's why he was afraid of uh, betrayal of them. So made them all as a slave of Egyptian people. Because of that, um, Israelites, they, they, were, uh, they had a hard time under the big bondage. And they were able to build um, spinkers and pyramid, and then they were suffered because of heavy, heavy work. That happened. Uh, but the um, Egyptian people, they denied that. We, we, we don't uh, get Israelites as a slave. But nowadays, uh, the, the archaeologists, they excavate one pyramid, the pyramid here, this why, uh, this tomb of Lake Meyer. Uh, this tomb is really, um, where is that, made a turning point of understanding of new uh, history of Israelites. Uh, the Lake Meyer, uh, actually, he is not a um, king. The ancient Egyptian uh, noble person, you know, Vizar, kind of priest of Israel, uh, the Egyptian empire. Uh, he was there, um, Tutmos III and Amenhotep, Amenhotep II. That period, he was um, the priest of Egyptian empire. Why this? Excavation is a mind-blowing excavation because of drawings. Lots of drawings are there. So many drawings and pictures. It's explaining so many hidden truths here. So when they search, the, there is a story was here. The Israelites, they were suffering because of heavy laden, hmm? under the heavy bondage here. They built and they make a brick, hmm? so, many, so many hard work like this. The Bible says, Exodus chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, uh, they, they were suffered because of uh, making brick, brick, and all manner of service at the field, field, her, uh, agriculture, right? But Egyptian, Egyptian government still denied we, we, we didn't do that, but this tomb explained that. The Bible is true. Beside that, you know, undeniable pictures, drawings are there. Israelites, they, they, they fabricate what? Bricks, right? This Bible is true. This is taskmaster of Egyptian and then they have hard work, and then they fabricate the bricks here, right? And this is a demonstration how to build a brick wall with a brick, a mud brick, like this. If you go to the museum, you can see this mud brick. I don't know how much is it. This is mud. And Israelites, under the hard bondage, they cried out to God, and they remember 
Oh, we have God, the Jehovah. And then they cried out, please, God, hmm? let us be free from uh, this hard, hard rate and, and hard bondage. And God sent Moses and then brought them back, uh, brought them all to the uh, land of Canaan again. That was the story of the book of Exodus. Uh, Israelites, uh, yeah, so with Moses, they uh, departed from the Gosan, and then they passed through the Scot, and then they passing through the wilderness. But after releasing all the Israelites, hmm, but Egyptian king, uh, when he so, see the situation, there is no people working instead of them, right? That's why he changed his mind. Um, how? Could he, what made him release the Israelites? God punished Israel, uh, Israel's soil with ten plagues. The last uh, punishment was killing the firstborn son, even animals. That's why uh, Israel, uh, Israel was released. And then after uh, releasing um, from the Egyptian empire, uh, they, were, um, they were running and passed through the wilderness, and they were heading uh, to the land of Kenyan. But Egyptian troops followed them to seize them all again. And then all of a sudden, uh, they were stuck in this historical place, Nueva Beach. Uh, if you Google it, uh, you, you can find it, the place is Google map. This is really huge area. Moses, he, he prayed to God, please God, save us. And then God... Uh, he divided this Red Sea in uh, two parts, and then they were able to uh, cross this Red Sea. Uh, actually, um, they stuck in this place 200, uh, 200 million. They stuck in this huge place, and then entrance is one. Um, if you go there, um, there is uh, some historical things, stops are there. Under the ocean, this uh, ocean, there is lots of cherished woods. Hmm? Um, uh, lots of corals cover that uh, cherished well, but we can still find out. And also, the, in the time of Solomon, in order to uh, commemorate the Red Crossing, he built um, some uh, pillar uh, from here up to uh, the other, other side. Here, this one. The, the Solomon pillar, here one, and another one is here. This is a marking of the Red Sea crossing. And after Red Sea crossing, they were able to get here, the Mount Sinai. This is the Solomon pillar. This is the Egyptian side, still there. But... Arabia side, Arabia side uh, they are the Muslim, right? That's why before uh, 19, 19, uh, 1989, 87, uh, still uh, we can see this pillar, but the government of Arabia, uh, they destroy this one and remove it. And then instead of this pillar, they put the bronze plate there. Now, this is one, this one only. But whatever, uh, Red Sea crossing, Red Sea crossing is real. That's the true. That's the true. Exodus chapter fourteen verse twenty one. Then Moses stretched out his hands over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. That miraculous things happen. What if, if this is true, could you believe God is alive and the Bible is reliable? Right? God is alive and the Bible is true. Let's check one by one. Yes. Like this. They were able to cross the Red Sea. If we search the terrain under the sea, this uh, Nueva Beach, uh, that terrain under the sea is really unique. It's a very shallow point. 
other part is very deep, but this area uh, is very shallow. And then they were able to cross this place, this area. Here, Exodus chapter 14, verse 25. And he took of their child the whale, so that they drove them with difficulties. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Um, when Israelites, they, they across this Red Sea, and Egyptian troops follow that. But uh, God uh, combined the water together and then let them drown totally and then destroy the Egyptian troops. That happened uh, in the time of, Mo uh, time of Moses. And then uh, we can see lots of evidences in the uh, bottom of the sea ocean there. Uh, let's, let's see. Mm. Some footage here. In the spring of 2000, a robotic camera was lowered into these waters for the first time. This has never been done. No one has been in the area at all with a remote control camera. The robotic camera's survey revealed many shapes and objects familiar to Muller including coral formations with right angles, arches, discs, and straight shafts fused into larger masses that had the appearance of twisted wreckage. Now, when we have been able to go back and forth with a remote control camera, we can repeatedly see that these strange structures we are looking for are there, not at one place, but you see them again and again and again. There are situations where you see something that looks like an axle, a hub, something that looks like a wheel, and you say to yourself, this is not a coral reef, this is a coral growth on an artifact. And that is what's different to me when I compare corals at other locations around the world. Since the earliest explorations at Nueva, one distinctive type of formation has often been identified on the sea floor. A slender, table-like structure, sometimes standing on end, with a coral-encrusted base, a straight shaft, and a circular top. It's a 90-degree angle, a right angle, between something that looks like an axle and the wheel. And you can see this in different varieties, and it looks very different from normal coral growth. And uh, it is like a man-made structure with a coral growth on it. In the midst of them, Pan Chien photographed this circular object attached to what appears to have been a broken axle or hub. This discovery was significant for two reasons. Pan Tien had documented the coral encrusted form of a wheel with dimensions similar to ancient Egyptian artifacts directly across from the proposed Nueva crossing site. Her find also provided independent confirmation of earlier evidence establishing wheel-like formations on both coasts of the Red Sea in accordance with descriptions in the biblical record. And the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army, and he made the wheels of their chariots come off. Yes. We have uh, many evidences. God is alive and the Bible is true. Uh, if the Bible is true, uh, you have to consider very seriously about this. God is alive and he's telling me truth. And then before the truth, you need to be honest. Uh, there is no uh, any other place to uh, run away from God. God is still uh, talking to us. You should believe and take the truth. You know, truth is, is very simple and easy to understand once you find it. But finding the truth, this is a really little bit hard. Hmm? This is a, a papyrus. Uh, and uh, this is, a, well, when archaeologists interpret this one, this is a story of 10 plagues happening. The story of the Exodus hmm, turns out is the truth. Let's uh, 
let me summarize this one. The Bible is true God's words. How could you know that? Many evidences. Look at here. Garden of Eden was true or not? Yes, we, we find the evidence, right? What about Noah's Ark and flood judgment? Truth, yeah. We have evidence. What about Sodom and Gomorrah happening? It's true, right? Mm. And what about the story of tower, Babel Tower? True. Yeah, we have many evidences. And what about Red Crossing? True, right? Because of this fact, we can rely on the Bible. Uh, we, we can rely on the Bible, the words of God. You search the scriptures, for in them you can you, you can you think you 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 can, you have eternal life. Why God put this all these truths in the Bible in order to give us eternal life? The point is this one: my faith is coming coming from the Bible or not? Many people, they could build their own faith. They want to believe what they want to believe, right? Nowadays, in our generation, many people, they manipulate. They try to manipulate God, and then they fabricate their own God in their heart. Hmm? But the Bible is, there is only one true, the only true God here, right? James chapter 2, verse 19 let me read here. You believe that there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. You know, demon, they, are, they deserve the bottom of the hellfire, right? Even demons know that, you know. Even demons know that. There is one God, one God, right? That's what Jesus said. Hmm? Whoever call me the Lord, the Lord can go to the heaven. Not everyone, hmm? So even the demons believe. Uh, when, when, uh, when, I, when I say, uh, when I conduct a Bible seminar, one granny come to me, oh, pastor, thank you. Now I really do believe God is alive. Thank you. I got saved now. No, this is not the meaning of being saved. Even demons know that, right? God is alive. I trust it 100%. I believe it. So what? The Jesus said, unless one is born again, no one can see the kingdom of God, right? We need to be born again. How? The Bible guides you. The Bible will guide you. Here, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 34. Uh, or did God every, uh, ever try to go and take for himself a nation from the midst of, of other nations, by trials, by signs, by wonders, by war, by mighty hands, and all outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did, you, uh, did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Why God uh, performed this awesome work, a miraculous work, in order to make us believe it, right? God, he, he, uh, He's not going to push us. You have to, you should believe it. But instead of that, He provides us lots of evidences. Right? That's your call. That's your call. So, um, here, uh, behold, behold, now is the accepted time Behold, now is the day of salvation, right? Uh, we're going to finish uh, early, uh, earlier, and uh, after taking uh, some rest, and then we're going to resume uh, 4 p.m. So you look very tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for giving this opportunity to study your words. Please let us help um, eternal life uh, and we are here in the presence of your uh, in, in, in front of your presence please help us and guide us with your truth let us understand what is true love of God uh, and uh, please let us be sure about our assurance of our salvation we only rely on you 
This is our prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross instead of us. Amen. So, uh, Pastor just gave us a great gift. He just finished 15 minutes earlier. (laughs) Okay, so um, now we got a chance to look through breathtaking evidences which appeared in the Bible so that we can judge whether the Bible was true or not. And then he covered uh, so many topics, by the way, like